Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is Madden 17 on EA Sports. It's hard to imagine this not being a fun game to watch. It's the Patriots going up against the Panthers. With that, let's get up to Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL finds us at Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Tonight, it's a preseason matchup here in week three between the New England Patriots and the Carolina Panthers. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, week three of the preseason. We're getting there. Opening night on the horizon. Here the Madden video game even came out on Tuesday, so you know we're close. But this is the week you use as your dress rehearsal, isn't it? It is. You go over everything as you would on opening day when it actually counts. They'll regulate how much the starters play, but this is probably the game they play the most in the preseason. And don't forget, after this game, the rosters get pared down to 75 guys. They were the final two unbeatens in the NFL a season ago. The Pats and Panthers are underway. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So now the Patriots getting set to take over on offense. And they're led out by their four-time Super Bowl-winning quarterback in his 17th season now for Michigan. It's Tom Brady. <laughs> You want to see a guy who absolutely... the game of football work try and see Tom Brady at practice it is absolutely fascinating when he's not on the field with the offense he's off on another field doing individual drills staying sharp staying in shape this is a guy who says he wants to play 10 more years he certainly works like it First down is Brady. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Just a one-yard pickup on the play, and it's a second down. Let's discuss this offense now, and Julian Edelman, very good player. Has really developed into a terrific slot receiver, and a lot of times he would be the primary receiver. Still mad coming out of college that he's not a quarterback in the NFL. He takes it out on the opposing defenses. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see. Second and nine. Now a first carry for LeGarrette Blount. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. But when it comes to the running game, the New England Patriots, 
They're one of the few teams in the NFL that I don't think care much about balancing things out. <laughs> Last year, to your point, fifth in passing yardage, number 30 in the run game. What they want to do each and every week is make a game plan based on their opponent, not so much their own personnel, and they try to attack that way. So now an early third and ten here on their opening drive. And the Panthers bring in their nickel set as they try to defend here on third down. Five defensive backs. Now a carry for the shifty Deion Lewis. Not much room here as he only gets it to about the 30. Just a one-yard gain on the play, and that'll be a call to the punt team as it's fourth down. So on fourth down, the left-footed Ryan Allen to kick it away for the Pats. Back deep for the Panthers, Ted Ginn. And now a low liner. I think he mishit it. Now it's Ginn. Penalty marker is down here. Return team. Automatic first down. first down. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Jabal Sheard in there to drop him and it'll be a loss of about eight. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. Second down. Caught on the left side by Ginn. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. It'll be a gain of nine, and that'll make it third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. Throwing on third down, Newton. And that is incomplete. Greg Olson was the intended target. And it'll be fourth down. Mike Cypress now in his 14th season on to punt it away. Back deep for New England, Julian Edelman. And this one will wind up being down just outside of that 20-yard line. The Panthers defense, they make their way back out there now. And it's early, but boy, they look good on the last drive. Getting that fourth down stop, they'll be looking to build off that momentum. They went into lockdown mode, didn't they? And what I loved about it is 
When someone goes for it on fourth down on their own side of the field. <laughs> gutsy. Not only gutsy, defenses take that as a sign of disrespect. And when they're able to shut them down and put it back in their face, they feel really good about trotting back out for the next series. We'll see if they still feel good here. First and ten, here's Brady. And he finds Danny Amendola. And he's brought down. 13 yards there on the pickup. And it'll be first down, New England. Barney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep, then curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole <laughs> cool. lot of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Well, let's see who's faster. Blunt, the lone running back. He'll get the football here. Muscles him off. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. It's a gain of 17 that time. And it gives the Pats a first down. When you've got a big guy like that in your backfield who runs as a big man and breaks tackles, it is paramount for a defense to have extra defenders in his vicinity at all times. Because you've got to figure he's going to break through the first guy. You're going to need tacklers two, three, four in order to get him down. Because if you don't, he can continue to run and run it really, really well. this down only to about the 46. A gain of three, second down. And the starting crew defensively for Carolina. It's real easy to talk about Thomas Davis coming back from multiple knee injuries, but he wants his play on the field to be the story. Seven yards to go on second down. Ready to throw on second down. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted. Thrown back across his body. Picked off by Trey Boston. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six from Panther touchdown. Well, we know this defense has athleticism. Spots like that prove us right. I love the way that you spotlighted the athleticism because you and I both know the best athletes on the field, they play on defense. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I was a kicker. you got to remember that now. Come on. Come on. Fine. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And 
And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7 to nothing lead. shot on offense following that pick six and now the kick is away this is fielded a couple yards deep and there's a flag on the field and with a new rule that decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he only gets to the 20 automatic first down the lone running back. He'll get it running right. And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Offense readies for a second and one. and get rid of the football because once the pressure comes the ball's got to be out holding on to it cost them two points and remember following the safety you give the football up as well and they free kick it from the 20 now now Brown. So now here are the Panthers with excellent field position to start off. And they'll be led out by their quarterback and none other than Cam Newton. In 2015, he had one of the great seasons ever by a quarterback in the NFL. A threat to throw it, a threat to run it, became a terrific leader and led his team to a Super Bowl appearance. taken down at the 44-yard line. Call it a gain of three, and it'll be a second down. When we look at this unit like we are now, Greg Olson has become such a reliable target in this league. Loves to be considered the number one option in the passing game in the offense he plays, and he lives up to it. Knows the defense is set for him, knows how to beat them. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. To throw on second down is Newton. 
And caught left side, Olsen. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They come out here in the eye. They'll run. This is Jonathan Stewart looking for a crease. Can't find one. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. And quickly, let's check out the New England defense. Terrence Knighton's nickname, Pot Roast, was given to him, and he didn't like it at first. Now he says, don't call me Terrence. Holds down the middle against anyone trying to run the football. Inside the 25 now at the 24. Six yards on the pickup, and they're going to face a third down. And a pretty simple completion there underneath, but a successful one for the offense. Partner doesn't have to be the big shots downfield all the time. Having that safety net underneath is a great thing for a quarterback. They get the completed pass, but still have more to go here on third down. They come up in an offset eye. Newton on third down. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. And Gano's kick is right through. And that will give him a 12-point lead. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. knocking through the field goal. Here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And he will take it back only to about the 13-yard line here. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these teams, special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. So the Patriots coming out now. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. Well, they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a... Base is clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. 
The drive starts with a handoff to Bourne. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. sure if he just heard a whistle there or what, but for some reason he spiked the football. So still a full 10 yards to go here for the offense on third down. Toss, Lewis, and there's a flag on the play. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. To throw is Brady. And this one complete to Martellus Bennett. 12 yards is the pick up there. And that'll bring up fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Now the four-year man out of Louisiana Tech. That's Ryan Allen on to kick this one away. Back deep, the veteran Ted Ginn. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And this will be down just on the other side of midfield. field here come the Panthers and they split the uprights last time for three they've got the lead they're not going to play this conservative they're not hoping for another field goal they're hoping for a touchdown I'm with you on that one I like where your head is I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right trying to sit on a lead and play that way that doesn't work too well for most teams run your offense run what you do best exactly put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way and the best way to do it touchdowns Newton now on second down. And Olsen over the middle. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Given seven on the play, and that'll bring up a third down. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height... He can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback who has to slide and find open space to throw. From the gun on third down, Newton. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Here's Mike Cyphers now as he'll kick it away for the second time. think Edelman will be able to get to this one and they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13 yard line pretty good spot and now out come the Patriots and three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now? I would say so. And they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal. Put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. Seven yards remaining here on third down. They come out here in the eye. Throwing is Brady on third down. Wide open receiver complete. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover. But if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. Yeah, right <laughs> now. You know that to come regular season, he's going to be ready to go. And maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And they'll get him down right about the 20. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Have they come up with a nickname for just Jonathan Stewart? Remember when it was double trouble when he's running with D'Angelo Williams in Carolina? But boy, what a year he had in 2015. Yeah, it was just 11 yards shy of 1,000, so close, but kind of stepped out of that shadow, didn't he? Certainly did, and gave the Panthers a real identity running the ball. Decent chunk of yardage still left here, second and seven. From the gun, here's Newton. And he finds his man, the tight end Olsen. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. All right, I'm doing my rudimentary math here. That's his third catch here in the first quarter. I don't know if it's just game plan or he's just finding his way open. And maybe a little of both. Three. 
Three yards left to grab here on third down. Newton now to throw. And caught left side, Olsen. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Well, they were in the red zone, and they needed a first down. Was it a surprise to you that they went to the tight end? Not at all. I thought, though, the defense might put a little more pressure on him, but still able to complete it. scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Boy, that's a lot of sirloin steak to be taken down for no gain, partner. <laughs> Are you trying to suggest that he is a huge man? He is Not a just a big, big man, big, a huge boy, man. Big, big boy. Well, how about the credit then for the defense to be able to chop that big tree and put him on the ground? I know back when you played, it took four of you to take a guy like that down, right? Well, that's for sure. And you know what, know what else? I didn't want to challenge him at dinner either. <laughs> So a little extra time to think about this third and goal as we're through one. 12-0 the score. We're back to Uptown Charlotte after this timeout. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Snickers. You're off your game when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gauden with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. And they'll come up. Looking to keep this drive moving. They come out here in the eye. And the 
inaugural carry here for Fonzie Whitaker. And he goes backwards on this one, losing yardage to the seven. He loses four, and it brings up four. They might think about going for it here, but it's still just the second quarter. Take the three points, tell the defense you believe in them, and let them get the ball back for you. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Time running out here on the play clock. Now the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. Well, there's two sides here. I guess you could pinpoint and look at the offense and say, oh, man, what a disaster. Hey, the defense, though, they came through. Preparation's the key to everything. And when you're on the defensive side of the ball and in special teams meetings, you prepare for plays like this. And in this case, they were actually able to win it. Patriot offense set to take over again. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Big word. I like it, though. Yeah. Because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> And that's why defense coordinators always preach 11 guys to the ball. Because sometimes you got to have a missed tackle. But if you have a swarm of guys around, less room for them to roam even after the first missed tackle. In this case, tackle was missed. Plenty of open field to get after that. So it'll be first down here after the run. And they just did not get the snap away in time. So now first and 15. second down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see, if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. yards to go on second down. Now they'll run with Lewis. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead them to third down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Pick it up. Pick it up. 
And the defense searches for one more stop here after the run on second down. Again, it's Lewis. So he fought off the tackle, and that effort gives him the first before he's brought down. He needed a yard. That's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. his way forward here for a good little game. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. And they're six yards away from picking up the first here on second down. Garoppolo now. Caught left side, Bennett. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Now, coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. This is Lewis. Treads the tackle. And a nice gain of 21 yards. I love everything about that run, except for maybe a couple of things. You got to wonder, do you fight a little harder to get into the end zone instead of going out at the two-yard line? And I know one thing, the fantasy football guys, they are not too happy that he went out of bounds there instead of trying to get into the end zone. Well, they've been practicing goal line offense all week. Let's see if they're able to capitalize here. and goal here from the two. They try again with Lewis. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second in goal. That run didn't get very far, and I think when you're looking at his dimensions, he's a little bit on the smaller side. He's counting on the big guys up front to escort him in, and they couldn't create any kind of space for him, could they? Yeah, didn't get the push they needed. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And he is going to lose yardage here. He lost two there. And it's third down. And a nice play there defensively. And this is a new acquisition, Charles. You and I were talking about a pregame. Just signed as a free agent earlier this week. Love when they pick up those guys with something to prove. Because any guy is a free agent off the street. No one else wanted him. So he wants to prove to the rest of the league, you should have signed me first. They'll go to the air here on third and two. And this is caught. 
touchdown, Patriots. Clay Harbor with his first touchdown in a Patriot uniform. And the Patriots are back within a score. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. Now Steven Goskowski on for the extra point. No, oh, he missed the PAT. No good on the extra point, so a lead down there, and this will stay a six-point ball game. Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. Fozzie Whitaker now on the return. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. The New England defense gearing up to take the field. Last time, pretty big moment in the game. Deciding to pass on the field goal, they went for it on fourth. This defense got the stop. And it's always interesting to watch, too, to watch both sides. Are we going to go for it on offense? The defense waiting to see which unit they need to have on the field. Are they going to kick the field goal or not? And once you realize they're going to go for it, to watch the defense now kind of mount a little extra energy to try and stop them. And when they're successful, oh, the emotion just more really comes the out. Step. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> pep and a little bit more than that. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. And that'll make it second and ten. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Now Anderson. And this one complete right side to Funches. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone, or? Better against man, because now you're running away from someone, and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. Another pistol look here. Here we go now. Blue landing. Blue landing. Hot. Now the Auburn alum, Artis Payne. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. Everyone understood their role on that play. Third and one. You know the defensive guys, they're trying to get down and get low and get leverage on the offensive linemen, but they didn't allow that to happen. They created a crease and allowed him to get through for a first down. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Anderson. And the tight end Dixon left side. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. He'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll make it second down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Second down, eight. Let's go, Steve. All right, here we go. Blue Lady! Blue Lady! Here we go, Here I come again. Here I come again. Now a 
shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. to throw. Penalty marker is down here. Going right side here and that's complete. Holding offense. So that last penalty means that the offense has to deal with a third and 18 coming up here. Hurry up, here we go. Green, 39. Green, 39. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. It's a pickup of 17 there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent gain. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. And how about this one now? In their own territory, a gutsy call. They're going to go for this on fourth and a yard. Play clock winding down. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. And they hit him as he throws as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. So just shy of midfield. They tried it. Didn't work out. What did you think? I thought that they should have punted the ball away. Should have gotten rid of it and played defense with better field position. Look, I'm as aggressive as anyone wanting to go for it on offense, but in this situation, it yeah, first half. I don't know that there's any risk. I mean, what's the reward for, for your risk here? I would not have done that. My only explanation is this coach, he may want to be up here in the booth with us. We may have a three-man booth <laughs> starting next week if he keeps up with those decisions. Some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Holding offense. here on first down and almost intercepted it would have been his second pick of the game instead it'll be second down tremendous coverage there just did not catch the football and complete the interception but what do they say all the time if he had really good hands he'd be playing offense So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Garoppolo now. Pass incomplete. He was looking to find some space for Deion Lewis there. And they're going to face an uphill battle here on third and long.
Complete. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Ryan Allen now as he'll punt it away for the second time. turn on this one is the fair catch a signal for and take it so possession goes over here on the punt and the Panthers will take over at the 20 yard line and making their way back out there now the Patriots defense and they were able to halt them last time on fourth down was a great stand they'll be looking for another stand here to be able to stand up against someone trying to go for it on fourth down because obviously they went for because they thought that they could get it that they thought they had the right play call didn't happen. They're going to be feeling pretty good about themselves going forward and flexing the rest of this game. And the offense will be trying to prevent that flex on this drive. Now Anderson. Funches with a catch over the middle. And he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football, but you do say, guess what? We can throw it. We can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking always talk about slot receivers and they're usually known as quicker than fast in this case we've got a guy who's quick and fast and he used it to great advantage and a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground shotgun he'll look to throw and Dixon over the middle and he's brought down give him 13 on the pickup there and that leads to a Carolina first down when you execute
execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. way forward here for a modest gain. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. A reminder coming up at halftime. Larry Ridley will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before that. pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down. Brad, wasn't that long ago that the guy playing that spot was an outside linebacker type of a guy. Now, as a defensive end, how about the speed that he used to get into the backfield and make the play? And the eighth play on this drive coming up. one-yard gain on the play, and that'll make it third and goal. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Well, they've got it down to the three, but now this is third and goal. to throw on third and goal. He dropped it. Couldn't hang on in the end zone. So no six points incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. And for the second time this half, on comes the field goal unit here. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Oh, that's offline. He hooked it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. So we would have figured that one to be three points in the bank, but this game, you know, can be unpredictable at times. Yeah, he knew he needed to pull it ever so slightly to get it going in the right direction, but he seemed to put a little too much on it. And from short range, that is a bad miss for an NFL kicker. We get a look at the Panthers' defense now. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of? Great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Play, and that'll make it a second down. 
Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Second down now after the pass completion. Garofalo. Complete to Washington. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Everything about that play was beautiful. A great corner route where the receiver worked the defensive back inside and then broke back to the outside to the corner. But how about the throw by the quarterback? Anticipation on the break from inside to outside. He threw the football. As the receiver turned around, the ball greeted him. Fresh set of downs here. They'll set up a throw. Got a man complete. It's Chris Hogan. And he's brought down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. They'll throw now on the final play. Washington's got it. And he's brought down. So we have reached halftime in what's a six-point game at the break as we send you down to Orlando where we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Panthers are forcing turnovers, but they still find themselves in a tight game. The Patriots have to feel somewhat fortunate that those same turnovers haven't cost them more. All right, let's roll those moving pictures. Pick it up early in the first. Sheard's got the sack here. This will go for a loss of eight. Patriots on second and seven. Under pressure here, and the ball is picked off. Panthers will end up returning it for a touchdown. Panthers is up now by seven. Midway through the second quarter, Harbour is found on the quick pass, and it's caught for the touchdown. The Pats now trail by six. That'll do it for us here at EA Sports Studios. Let's get back out to Brandon and Charles for the call of the second half. Brandon.
Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. And a short kick, taking it about the 16. And they're going to wind up with pretty good starting field position as they get it up past the 35. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's see if they do just that. Now Anderson. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. The good signal calls would never go back in the huddle and play the blame game because they need those guys to protect him. But on that last one, his offensive line, they lost their leverage very quickly, and that's why they were able to get to him and hit him as he tried to throw the football and force an incompletion. Second down following the incompletion. Let's go! Boom! Landed! Anderson. Caught left side by Funches. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. So here we go, first and ten now. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. And this one complete right side to Funches. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. It's a nice completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. 
but it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds, because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. Always so empathetic for those DBs, aren't you? They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. All right, here we go. to throw now on first down. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it and it won't help them at contract time. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Give him two yards on that play. And just like that, it's third down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. An extra corner on the field for New England here on third down. Yeah, another DB. Back to throw again. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he carries this one all the way down to the nine. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. Clock's running down. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. That's caught at the three. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Brenton Burson from eight yards out. And the Panthers add on to their lead. And that score gives him a little more separation and a bigger lead. A little more of a comfort zone now. They can do more things defensively, maybe take a few more gambles as they try to continue to extend their lead. And they'll get set here looking for the two-point conversion. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. And there's a flag on the play. Delay of game, offense. Another try at two here from the seven now. Time 
time running out here on the play clock. Back to throw. Looking for Funches, but it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. touchdown here to kick it away now Jones a strong running <laughs> and he breaks it all the way out to the 38 yard line great return the Panthers defense gearing up as they take the field Second down. up the screen to Lewis. And some room to maneuver. A huge play there on the screen pass. And even 40 yards. A well-executed screen pass means the offensive line has bluffed the defenders. They make them think that they could just get through and get to the quarterback. Instead, they're setting them up. Little screen pass, lofted over them, and now they're in front, and they get downfield for big yardage when they do it right. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Not an ideal spot to be on first down, but I love that the play caller did not immediately abandon the running game and say, OK, we've got to throw it in order to pick it up. Stayed with the run, was rewarded with a big time pickup. Now they're in second and manageable. They come up in an offset eye. Now White, penalty marker is down here. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now hold on here, we do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Holding offense. So second and 10 here. Now a 
shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Caught left side, Bennett. Illegal block in the back. Offense. teammate is able to come up with the ball. So a fumble on second down. They're able to maintain possession. Brings up third. Back to throw here. This is White on the screen. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It's a gain of nine yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. That was a nice catch, and if the goal was to get in the field goal range, it certainly appears that they accomplished that. Well, and sometimes that's what you dial up in these situations, right, when you want three? Well, if the goal was to get into field goal territory, even though it'll be a long attempt, I think they accomplished that. And sometimes you have plays for that. It's not always a first down when you want three, get a little bit closer, making an easier shot. Yeah, sometimes you just have to concede to the defense that they know what you're trying to get done, and to try and get any more than that is almost folly. Take what you can get, maybe have an opportunity to put three points on the board. Carolina getting set to take the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. So second down, three yards to go now. And he's got it. Got his man on the end round. Complete. And it goes a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. one down near the 45-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Anderson. And this will complete right side to Funches. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. He's a second-round pick, a solid second-round pick. But when you're close to that first round, do you come in with a little chip on your shoulder? 
You definitely do because now your money's not the same. But even more than that, it's the prestige. Everyone wants to be a first-round pick, and he thought his talent demanded that. And I do know some teams in the league that had first-round grades on him. They added a lot of talent to a roster that really needed an infusion of youth. They got a very good infusion of youth. And they didn't really reach to get anyone as well. They stuck to their draft philosophy, got the best players they could at the time they were drafting, and inserted them into their lineup. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Play clock winding down. Out of the gun now on third down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll be fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And he puts a little something extra into this one. By far his best of the night. And not what he was hoping for there, as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. the New England offense to see what they can do this time. Last time out they had that long 50 plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline they're thinking to themselves okay do we still want to try one if we're in that position again and I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker but just to be on the safe side I'm sure they told their offensive guys can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time. Closer. Yeah well, you know I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost but if all else fails less of a field goal attempt for him. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Toss play to Lewis. And he'll get this one up to about the 39 here. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, Oftentimes, it's not a very successful play. Garoppolo. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Martellus Bennett, the intended receiver. And it'll be third down. As tight ends go, he might not provide the super flashy plays very often, but he's pretty reliable. Usually an excellent target and normally catches what's thrown to him, but he didn't on that play. Third down and three. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting 
Like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one. tackle but couldn't spring himself free every time i see a coach challenge a spot that makes me a little bit nervous for that coach those are very difficult to get overturned well the biggest reason correct me if i'm wrong is just technology a lot of times you just don't have the angle yeah i think all the coaches when they want to challenge that type of a play they want to put the magnets or the things or the sensors in the ball to show exactly where it is but right now it's all about us humans After review of the play, the rookie on the field stands. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. Hey, and then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. They're going to try and throw. And there's a flag on the field. But it's brought in by Washington. Push the foul, roughing the passer, defense. So the roughing the passer penalty, 15 yards, and Charles, the defender, needs to know to stop there. We've been talking about it for years. You essentially get one step after the quarterback throws his pass. Anything close to that or beyond that, you're going to get flagged. So the offense has it first and 10. And he'll give it here to his running back. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. time to the tailback and he'll go down here right around the 23 yard line it's a nine yard gain and it keeps the drive moving well that last run makes this a hundred yard night i've loved the way he's hit the holes he's been quick he's been decisive and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch first down and 10 now for the offensive group shotgun he'll look to throw wide open receiver complete seven yards on the play and it'll make it a second down so they complete the pass and now they face a second down toss and they'll bring him down at the 13 yard line three yards there good enough to keep the drive moving 
So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. They come out with one back and three tight ends. On first down, he'll drop the throw. And almost intercepted. It would have been his second pick of the game. Instead, it'll be second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Second down, sets up the screen to Lewis. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Call it a pickup of seven, and that's going to bring up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They come out here in the eye. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he is in. Touchdown, New England. Deion Lewis, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Patriots have cut it back within a score. And they're able to run it in. It started with the battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Extra point try for Goskowski. And this is off the left, upright, but he banks it through. How about that one? Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. Let's field it a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. Let's go! Blue Lanny! Blue Lanny! Anderson. And the tight end, Dixon, left side. And down he'll go at the 25. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers out in front and in control of the football as well as we begin quarter number four.
come out here in the yard. Now Anderson. It's caught right side, Dixon. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. The offense lining up first and watch ten. Here's Hardis Payne. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. it now you can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there right. offense comes to the line now first and ten Clock's running down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Second down of the offense needing five yards. Again here with Artis Payne, and he is going to lose yardage here. Holding offense. Put two receivers left, two to the right. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Looking left sideline, incomplete.
And here comes play number six on this drive. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to go for a big play downfield. And that one incomplete. Had some position, but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Here's Mike Cyphers now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Panthers' defense as they get set to go again. They struggled that last drive. They were kind of hit two ways, both with the run and the pass. And I love how you brought hit into it because a lot of defense corners like to show a little cut-up film the night before a game. They usually have some boxing in there, and it always shows the guy being the aggressor, the guy on his toes punching, not back on his heels taking punches, and that's where this defense was on the last possession. They were on their heels. Will they be on their heels again? Let's see. become a passing league and because of that more defensive backs on the field on most plays Gano for the extra point to the left and no good. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And he is out of bounds here on the return. The Patriots offense now. They work their way back onto the field. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Second down following the run. Look at 
They'll give it to him right up the gun. And can you believe it? It's a second safety in this ballgame. And this defense continues to dominate. How about two safeties in one game here? You don't even put that on your goal sheet. This is something that results when you're playing really well on defense and the offense has nowhere to go with the football. Dominating performance. After the safety, remember, they also need to give up the football. And here's the free kick. And taken right at the 35. That return gets all the way to midfield. So we know the field position is absolutely flipped at this point. If I'm the defensive coordinator, I might think about blitzing right now to try and take field position back. Carolina getting set to take the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Now a handoff looking right. And there's a flag on the play. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Shotgun. He'll look to throw. Going to throw right side here. Complete. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make it second and ten. play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground back to throw now on second and ten and he'll be hit as he releases it and that'll fall incomplete you got to give some credit. They're able to hop up in the air and bat that one away. And that's frustrating for an offensive lineman because the only recourse is when he goes in the air to try and give him some type of a pop or a shove, hoping to bring his arms down. Offense trying to avoid stalling out, facing a third and ten. They'll come out in the pistol. And this one complete right side to Funches. It'll wind up being stopped for no gain, and it'll lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Here's Mike Cyphers now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. It's a nifty return of 29 yards. And the Pats will take over at their own 20. 
We get a look at the Carolina defense as they work their way into position. They got the safety last time. Those are ones that don't happen every week. So, Charles, I would imagine that can be a big rallying point for a unit. Oh, no doubt about it, because right now they've kind of come together, and you can see it. They're an attacking, marauding band of brothers that are making big plays out there. Marauding? You like that is one, that, huh? Is that a word? Seriously? I had the SAT prep. Wow. <laughs> well, I won't give my score. All right, here they go. They're going to try to maraud again. seven-yard line. Give him seven on the play, and it'll be second down. Second down now after the pass completion. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Throw to cross his body, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here, when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt, and in a big way. Carolina getting set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Now a handoff here to his running back, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Off the corner, where'd he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. <laughs> I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game, no gain. Now Anderson. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Now defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. So here we go, a third down after the second down pass completion. Again, we'll see the pistol here. They'll toss it to Artis Payne. And he is going to lose yardage here. He loses five full yards to bring up Ford. Obviously, the offense thought they had something going by trying to go wide on a short yardage play. But how about the defense expecting something in the middle and still able to adjust and sprint to the edge and make the play? Now Graham Gano to try the Panther field goal. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. And Gano is going to miss this one left. Oh, it's no good for Gano. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, it's still a good size lead, so they haven't necessarily needed him, but this is now two missed field goals for him in this game so far. Yeah, and the question now is, will he be prepared when they do need him? Whether that's later in this game or sometime down the line, having a kicker you can count on is definitely imperative. The Panthers' defense, they make their way back out there now. And now Big Moe's wearing a shirt of their color. They're hoping to continue that momentum in their direction, but maybe another pick. Who's Big Mo? He's momentum, man. Right? Momentum. And right now, he's hugging them. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. 
Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. A great lead, and it's picked off. And this return is going to be halted right around the 28-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Carolina getting set to take the field. And last time out, another missed field goal. So maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now... And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked off by Nate Ebner. And this one will be brought back to the 22. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different colored jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. And he's got a man complete. Penalty marker is down here. He does take it in for the touchdown, but a flag on the field, and I don't think this is going to stand. Yeah, don't put the points on the board just yet. Illegal block in the back. Offense. down he'll drop to throw he's got his man on the crossing route and he'll be taken down but not before he gets into enemy territory looked like the screen pass was taken away there and that was a nice job of improvising but it's not normal usually when the screen pass is taken away you're taught to just throw the ball at the ground at the feet of the receiver so that you don't get it intercepted and just start over but he ended up finding another receiver He's able to take it down to the 42. It's a gain of six on the play, and it'll make it second down. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. The interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. Looking to throw. Washington with a catch. Middle of the field. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll look to throw here on first down. Able to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to
to him on that play. He simply dropped it. Second down now after the incompletion. Now they try the right side here. And there's a flag on the field. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Seven. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll make it third and 13. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. Completed pass on second down. Now it's third down as the defense looks for the stop. All right, here we go. Blue 90. Blue 90. Gone, gone. Gone, gone. Gone, gone. Back on it up, Philly. Here we go. They'll look to throw again. And there's a flag on the play. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. So a costly penalty and now a tougher third down situation. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Again, he'll drop the throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. The new acquisition, Martellus Bennett, the intended target. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Third down is a down. Both sides know they absolutely have to win. And the name of the game for the defense is pressure on the quarterback. But pressure on the quarterback with contact, that's how you end up winning it. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. He's going to wind up and air it out. And that is incomplete. The Patriots come up empty on fourth down. And the Panthers will get the football back. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations teams get the ball back and that miracle does occur so they can't let that dream go just yet they have to get stout on defense here yeah right now really hoping for a turnover a chance for us to get a glance at this Patriots defense they got a little steam following the interception the last time they were out there Charles and they wanted to keep that going now because once you get one he wanted to multiply and turn into a bunch more and right now they're putting up their version of a no-fly zone no fly zone. I like that. We, we, we had a flyover before the game. Yeah, but, but this time they would intercept it. <laughs> and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. 
And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and it's a second down. Five yards left for the offense. It's second down. And he'll give it here to his running back. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It's a loss of two, now third down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL. And a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw, and he will find his man on the end route, complete. Call it a three-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. Here's Mike Cyphers now, as he'll come on to kick for a sixth time tonight. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Start the drive. Sets up the screen to Lewis. Penalty marker is down here. And all the way down to the 39. screen that's complete and taking it across midfield and inside the 45 that one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks set of downs here. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. He finds the tight end harbor complete. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Give him eight on the play. And it'll be a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Patriots with a football as we get you reset. 
And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. They'll set up to throw. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he'll go down at the 28. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are, you know, make him make someone miss in the open field. Garoppolo. And there's a flag on the field. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play. And the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. Let's go! They'll look to throw now on first down. And complete on the right side to Bennett. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Give him six on the play, and that'll make this a second down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll look to throw here. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. touchdown that they needed so they'll celebrate but the guys on the sidelines they've got to stay focused the onside kick team they need them to get the ball back yeah part one of the equation done now they need to convert then get that onside kick Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. Garoppolo looking to throw for it. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. So there is still time, a little over 50 seconds to go, but this becomes a critical onside kick. A scramble for it. I think the Patriots may have got it. They did. So they've accomplished half the mission, Charles. They get the onside kick. They do need a touchdown here, but they've got some time to do it. In the excitement, there's no need to press. Plenty of time.
time. They have the opportunity. Now they just need to execute and finalize things. This one out closer to midfield across the 45. Six yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second down. It didn't check off every box, but the most important one. Got the clock stopped, getting out of bounds. They may be a little short of the first down, but I thought that was the key. They complete the pass, and now they face a second down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Detroit! Detroit! Let's go! Green, 39! Green, 39! Back to throw. And, oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they will finally get him as he's all the way down near the 40-yard line. Brandon, normally when you hear about guys making two interceptions in the game, you're thinking must be a free safety, maybe a corner. How about getting two picks out of one of your linebackers? Again, he's just in the right place at the right time. And that's another great play to come away with the football. Carolina getting set to take the field. They have the lead, still a one possession game, but the defense got the stop. They've got the football now. Just salted away, right? Exactly. That's all the defense is counting on from their offense. They did their job in a big way. You know they're over on the sidelines now starting to take their tape off. And, hey, we've done this thing. The offense has to put it away, and that means ball security. Absolutely. Stranger things have happened. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. tell you what partner you learn a lot in every game but when you win a close one maybe you get to determine a little bit more about the guts of your team if you're the head coach it gives you much more than a snapshot now doesn't it you get to see the full picture of who your team is and especially individuals and how they handle pressure situations and then moving forward you have the confidence that late in a close game hey we've been here before we've done this we've won this game there's a comfort zone that exists now so instead of them pressing in those situations now there's an air of confidence and calm and then you just watch them go out and execute So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gauden. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Panthers are winners here as we say so long from Charlotte.